understand where I was coming from with this picture. Very industrial, anxiety driven, and almost as I would like to call it, like the walls would feel like it's closing in. For somebody like myself, who's a dyslexic, learning diverse individual, this room's a nightmare. And that's why I registered myself with PMC. But as you can see, 90% of people are non-visible or have a non-visible learning impairment, if you will. And most of that is not just due to learning disabilities, but ADHD, mental health, and medical trauma. So we went on to rebranding learning disability to learning diversity. Because there's so if we can be diverse on the outside, we can sure as hell be diverse on the inside. And Hans van der Velt is the president of the Dutch Dyslexic Association and the current chair of ADHD Europe. And when I went there, apparently I have to do a double click. Yeah, when I went there, he coined the term learning diversity and explained what it is with my yeah. followers. With, with me, with us. With us. Um, using the word learning disability, mm -hmm. sorry, you're on the wrong track. That's old school. That's uh, the 20th century. We are now in the 21st say century. That. Could you say that right at the camera <laughs> for all our kids? No, no, seriously. No, like, uh, really, uh, uh, learning, talking about learning disability is so stupid. It, if it's a disability, it's a school disability. The school has the disability to put you in the right place, to organize the right structure, etc. The school is being paid for it. You are the client. And uh, if they cannot handle diversity, then they're well. They shouldn't be paid for it. Let's let's you can. It's it's a it's a different way of thinking. The diversity in in nature, in people, mm -hmm. in the whole nature. If you don't understand diversity, how can you be, uh, let's say, a biology? Uh, exactly. Uh, so. What the initiative does, just to give you a quick synopsis, is that person in the middle with the bald head, he's a Canadian Olympic bronze medalist in London 2012, and it's a panel discussion, and he is learning diverse. Ever heard of how important representation is when it comes to certain things? Me, seeing that as a learning diverse individual made me empowered, made me feel empowered. And coaching doesn't necessarily mean as an athletic coach. And that's what I want people to gather from this conversation, is that a coach can go, or coaching styles and coaching techniques can go further to help you overcome obstacles than what you can think. Um, we also have a basketball tournament. And what I love about basketball, and what I love about uh, the tournament is that the kids are the ones that gather. The kids are the ones that end up gain those experiences in order to help run and help advocate for a cause that they might not know can directly affect them. So what is experiential learning and what is personalized learning? This is the CLOBE cycle uh, developed by David CLOBE, an American learning theorist, and he suggested that um, people need to gain knowledge in four elements, and that is by participating acting upon it, reflecting, and then repeating. So essentially what individuals should be doing is they go and they have a concrete experience, then they reflect on those experiences and see how it applies to their certain area of knowledge. Then they synthesize those new learning methods and put it into a place in their own minds that fit best for them. And then they try and put it to practice. Personalized learning is how you tailor one person's individual learning style and how that individual can use and know its strengths and weaknesses. We all know that learning is not linear. It is an interconnected web. And we know that there is no one-size-fit-all policy. Just imagine Shaquille O'Neal walking into a clothing store and they tell him that, that one size fits all. If you don't know who Shaquille O'Neal is, uh, there's Google. So, <laughs> transferable skills, okay, is 
the core part of personalized learning and is the core part of experiential learning. So it's how one gains transferable skills. So I asked you at the beginning if you guys have done art or if you guys have done sports. For myself, I was a competitive swimmer for 11 years. And swimming didn't really help me teach me math. But what it did do is go up to my teacher as if they were a coach. Go up to my teacher and ask, hey, I don't quite get this. Can you teach me in another way? Those advocacy skills can go a long way. Also, let's just say for yourself, I heard some people say volleyball or basketball. You go to another court, right? You go to another gym. There's home crowd advantages, and then there's the way and being away and how that can impact you. Being submerged in an uncomfortable environment can teach you more things than you don't know about yourself than you already did. So, these are the kids that I coach. And essentially, they were the ones that catalyzed me founding Open Doors with my friend and Tom. I was assigned, and in a way, this is my own version of experiential learning. I got thrown into the senior B. So senior B is the kids that were viewed as not as competitive or not as talented as the senior reds or the senior A's. I wanted to challenge that, and I wanted to gain the experiences that I got through all the educational uh, resources that I was privileged enough to have and decided, you know what, I'm going to try to apply the same type of learning style to these kids and to see how they improve. And I started coaching in 2016. Most of these kids that you see here worked really hard in senior white and senior B and managed to get their way up to the senior A, if not excel, and some of them provincially medaled in British Columbia. And that isn't on my excellent superb coaching skills. No, that's on them. And how all I needed to do was help personalize our goals and personalize our learning. And I find that teachers in a way should grab something from coaches and expand the purview. All of us should expand the purview of what a classroom is and what coaches are. If a teacher could potentially have the same mindset as a coach and individually go up to their peers or their students and try to teach them in a way that is around their own personal characteristics, whether it could be some software introducing them to some software or whether it could be a different learning style like experiential learning and going through the motions and not being afraid to going back to the drawing board. I don't care, to be quite frank, if they meddle that provincials. I don't. The best thing I cared about was them coming out and them having something and them feeling like they gained something without winning the conventional areas of what athletics need, like winning a medal or being the top swimmer in British Columbia. No, what I wanted to have them tell me was how they learned and how they applied these skills in their everyday life. And I had one kid come up to me and say, you know what, Coach Mike? I went to a math test, and I realized a math test is so much more easier than doing a 200-meter IM. And I'm like, good for you, dude, because there it goes, right there. That idea of being submerged in an uncomfortable environment and learning from those experiences and applying it to something bigger. And applying it to something that they can carry on for the rest of their lives. What I saw with these kids is that me as a learning diverse individual and these kids, I don't know whether they're learning diverse or not. I did have experience coaching individuals with autism. But for the most part, like we said at the beginning, it's invisible. That you don't know necessarily what these kids are going through. Because it's a big part of their chunk of development, whether they're trying to figure out who they are, what they want to do, where they want to go to university, if they even want to go to university or a trade program. The most important thing to do is have them gain those experiences to personalize their goal in a collective environment. So when they gain those skills, they can leave high school and make that transition successfully out of high school saying like, you know what? Just because Billy got an A plus in math doesn't mean I'm going to get an A plus in math. Just because John here is really good at writing 
papers doesn't mean I need to be the best at any of the papers. I need to do the best that I can. That's all I want to ask. Now you're like, okay, you know, we get it. You like your kids and everything like that. Sure. So let me give you a little bit more of a broad perspective. What do these two have in common? Don't worry, Don, to answer. I'm going to answer for you. The one in the yellow, don't know if you've heard of him, Magic Johnson, he has dyslexia. The one in the red, no, I don't know him. So, no. Michael Jordan, okay, he has ADHD. And this quote on the top resonates with what I would love to do is you're the only one who can make the difference. Whatever your dream is, go for it. It's very individualistic. It's not placing the onus on them, whether they have a disability or a learning diversity or whatever you want to call it. It's placing the onus on them in order to say, you know what, where are the resources? Where can I advocate for myself? And how can I go back to the drawing board in order for me to go against the odds that are stacked against me? Magic Johnson was in the sixth grade, and he found out he was dyslexic because all his classmates were laughing at him. I was in a similar boat when I was asked to read something out loud for the first time. I was embarrassed and humiliated. Now Magic Johnson is a philanthropist. He is a Hall of Famer basketball player, and he's making business deals that no one probably in that sixth grade class could ever imagine him doing. Michael Jordan. Well, we all know the jump brand. There's a song named after his brand, okay? He's done quite successful for himself. But you're probably thinking, how does this have to do with experiential experience, personalized learning? Well, here's the thing. See in the background, all those eyes staring at them, all the pressure, it's almost like this type of experiential experience that I'm doing right now, is that under pressure, they manage to take everything in and stay focused within an environment that could be hostile, it could be comfortable. Just imagine them when Michael Jordan wanted to pitch a shoe or find investors for his shoe. Or same with Magic Johnson to find donors for his HIV foundation and how he would stand up and talk to them. These transferable skills are important, but there's more that meets the eye, just like people who are learning diverse. We can't see it, but we know that it's there. And we know that everyone in this room has those skills in order to go above what people expected them to do. So, I want to leave you with this. Okay? I challenge you not be scared of taking challenges head on. I want people in this room to realize that it is okay to fail. <coughs> you learn how to fail, but if you don't take that chance, you'll never know if you're ever going to have that opportunity. Never be afraid to go back to the drawing board. I reference this again and again. And that means acknowledge your own ignorance. Know what you don't know and work on it. Your greatest strength, in my opinion, is almost equivalent to your greatest weakness if you don't work on that weakness. I challenge you to keep your minds open, keep those doors open for yourself, and always keep learning. And I'd like to leave you all with this quote. Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I may remember. Involve me and I may win. Benjamin Frank.